Hello everyone, I'm Shannon Deskins with East Kentucky Broadcasting, your host today for the City Commissioner's Report. And with me today I've got our City Commissioner, Barry Cheney. So it's nice to have you along Hello, with Shannon. us today. Good to be here. It's good to have you here. So a lot of things to talk about. Um, and it's exciting to be able to do shows like this when you've got good news it to is. talk about. It is. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy the show very much. Well, good. First thing I want to talk about, because it's been really recently in the news, um, your city police chief retired. Uh, yes, uh, we hated that uh, Chief Aggins retired. He served uh, the city for eight years and uh, has done a great job. Uh, he took over the when he took over the department. It was, there was some uh, issues, some turmoil, uh, and he got all those straightened out and he put the department back on the right track. And uh, it is an award-winning department now, and uh, it's mostly because of his leadership and uh, his vision that he had for the department. And I think um, his last day is... His last day will be uh, Friday, well, uh, November so 31st or 30th, whatever. Yeah. So and, uh, he's already, at this point, he's already out the door. So. Well, yes, I, and uh, we, <laughs> we do hate to see him go. Uh, I've known Jimmy Dean a number of years, and uh, he's a fine man. Uh, high moral character and uh, you know you, you just won't have a better person than Jimmy Dean Higgins and uh, uh, like I say we hate to see him go but I think grandchildren may have come into play in this situation. That was my <laughs> next question because I know he stood up and addressed the commission at well, the last commissioner's he, meeting and, and gave you all some information. Well he's a little bit on the bashful side Jimmy Dean mm -hmm. is so uh, you know he asked if he'd come in closed session and discuss with us and uh, talk to us and uh, he was very complimentary of the commission and thanked us and, uh, you know, and uh, talked about how he enjoyed the years of service that he had had with uh, the department and uh, his years as uh, city police chief. And uh, uh, he had an unusual request. You know, usually a departing chief will throw a, a party for him and uh, have everybody come in and uh, then give them some type of gift. But uh, he had a... Uh, his car, the old, the old blue Ford that he had, mm -hmm. uh, uh, he uh, wanted to take that with him, and uh, it had way over 100,000 miles on it, and uh, I think the appraised value was about 1,500. If we took it to auction, we got maybe get 700 out of it, and uh, but uh, he wanted to take that car with him, and uh, so we agreed to give him that as a going away gift. Did you still leave the blue lights in it? Uh, yeah, we'll <laughs> still leave the blue lights in it, and uh, you know he. Uh, we may see him again around town. Uh, I don't think he's one that's going to go away quickly. I, I've had the pleasure of working with Chief Adkins um, through my work at East Kentucky Broadcasting over the past several years, and uh, you can't ask for a better guy. Oh, no. No, you cannot ask for a better guy. And, uh, you know, and he's going to stay plugged into the community, and I'm sure our new chief will, will probably uh, be calling on him quite often, which uh, Chief Adkins said that when they need help, he would be more than happy to help him out. It's always good when you've got that seamless type of transition to where the, the one going out was willing to teach the one coming in, so oh, that's yeah. good. Yes. It's a good transition. <laughs> uh, you guys just made a big announcement as far as the new chief. Yes, the new chief, uh, which uh, we had four great candidates to choose from, Shannon. And, uh, you know, when we began to discuss that, when uh, we understood that Jimmy Dean was going to retire, and we discussed it a little bit, and we talked about a little bit about looking outside the department uh, and bringing somebody in and uh, you know we really really did it after we looked at our people and uh, you know we really couldn't have bettered ourselves by going somewhere else and bringing somebody new in uh, because we've got the best of the best and uh, to having having four quality candidates like we had or have is a testament to Jimmy Dean Aggins' leadership and uh, mm -hmm. what he brought to the department over the eight years. So we had four highly qualified candidates who applied for the position, uh, all of those young men from within the department. And uh, we, when we did our interviews, we had extensive interviews. Uh, in fact, originally we scheduled our interviews for 20 minutes, and uh, you know some of those interviews lasted over an hour and a half. I, I think they may have felt like they were on the grid. I don't. Know. <laughs> I guess that can be a little bit intimidating. Well, it it was, and uh, for them, and uh, but you know we we knew that this is a very important 
uh, decision, very important position. And, uh, you know, we wanted to know what the vision of the new chief was and uh, what, uh, what their thoughts were and kind of get into their head and uh, understand them a little better. And, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, well, we weren't on agreement. And uh, as this commission has been able to do for uh, the past six years, as, you know, when we have disagreed, we've been able to sit down and talk and uh, I feel I've come up with the best decision. And uh, I think that we've done that this time. Uh, we've chosen Philip Reed as our mm -hmm. new police chief. He is, uh, presently he is the detective uh, at uh, Pipeville PD. And uh, Philip uh, has a lot of, uh, well, he's very well educated, uh, has a lot of certificates, and also uh, he has the largest indictment in uh, federal court in London, uh, Kentucky, that's ever been brought before uh, that court. Uh, he broke the car theft ring a couple of years mm -hmm. back that was, uh, that was uh, well, it was about four or five uh, counties, and uh, those cars were being shipped all over the country. And he broke that car theft ring. And uh, uh, he got uh, a lot of accommodations from uh, FBI, uh, state police, and uh, he's, uh, his work in that was real thorough, and uh, he was recognized statewide. And he's a good guy. I know Philip, so. Um. Oh, he's an excellent young man, excellent young man. Yeah. Well, w since he's moving up to the chief position, I guess you're going to have to f reshuffle some things on, well, on we, as far as detectives and some other spots to fill. Yeah. I mean, you had a captain recently uh, retire as well. Yeah, we so. had a captain recently retire, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the, that position will be filled. Well, which actually we, this past uh, year, we had uh, two captains retire. We had Wood Pruitt and uh, uh, Eddie Sword mm -hmm. retired. So uh, we're going to fill both those captains' positions, and then uh, we'll fill the, uh, the detective position. And uh, we'll, we'll, a lot of that input will come from uh, uh, Philip Reed, our new chief, uh, but our, our new captains will probably be uh, uh, James Young, or not James Young, Ricky Yance and uh, uh, Chris Edmonds. Yeah. And, uh, so. and Chris, no stranger to the force. His father was your chief years and years yes, ago. Yes, he so. was. And, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of, I guess we say, heritage going on. In, in well, I, you know, uh, Buster, I grew up on Routes Creek, and Buster lived up above me there, and uh, he's a few years older than me. And, uh, and you can tell by looking at us. <laughs> uh, but uh, I've known Buster, knew Chris uh, when he was just a little fella. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's kind of like a big family, I guess, you know. But um, I've known all those guys. I knew Philip when he was a young man. And uh, Aaron, I knew, I know, I've known Aaron for a number of years since he was a young man, a teenager. And, uh, well, you're just you're reiterating the fact that you've got a great force. It's a team. They work together, and that's what you've got to have. So, well, they do, and uh, you know, in those interviews, they've got a, they had a good vision, all four of them, for the department, and there was a lot of common threads uh, through those uh, visions, and uh, they'll be able to work together and accomplish a lot. Well, we're looking for more good things to come out of the Pikeville Police Department. Looking at the list of what you guys talked about um, when you're just past commissioners meeting, you wanted to mention something about talking about the new cell phone uh, style. <coughs> well, we had uh, we had the first reading of an ordinance uh, that will either provide a commissioner with a cell phone or uh, pay a stipend of seventy-five dollars a month for that cell phone. Uh, I guess you know a lot of people may say, "Uh huh, spending a lot of money." Uh, but, you know, I think when you look at the amount of work that we do, uh, and if you compare our job to the job of the magistrate, the magistrate makes $45,000 a year uh, as a vehicle, uh, has a secretary, uh, has an office, and, uh, you know, the, and they really don't do that much more than what a city commissioner does. And, uh, and in many ways, a uh, city commissioner's position is uh, equally as important in a lot of times we do a little bit more than they do because, you know, we have to uh, 
supervise, or not supervise, but we have to deal with water and sewage, uh, which they don't have to. But, uh, you know, there are days, uh, Shannon, and I'll get as high as 80 some phone calls a day on my cell phone. And they're uh, not always between the hours of 9 and 5. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. And, uh, you know, uh, it's various issues. Uh, you know, sometimes it's just people just wanting to check on me and see how I'm doing. And uh, uh, a lot of times there's complaints. And uh, Well, uh, and things you know. happen. You have natural disasters or things that oh, you yeah. guys need to be made aware of. And they're sometimes they're on the weekends or sometimes they're at night. So. Yes. And uh, then, uh, you know, there's text messages back and forth. A lot of times, uh, you know, you can send an email. Uh, with the phones nowadays, you can send an email and uh, get a response back. Or you can text. Uh, you can't ever get away from the office. No, no. Not these uh, days. No, I mean, you know, when you go on vacation, uh, you know, it's it's with you. And, you know, I, uh, my wife got aggravated at me for taking so many calls on vacation the last time. So, so anyway, uh, we do use that quite a bit. And uh, uh, it's something that uh, we kind of felt like we might should do. But, uh, but we've still got to vote on it yet. We had first reading of that ordinance and the next commission meeting. We'll have a second reading and then a vote will be taken. Okay. Talking about the commission, um, December the 10th, which is coming up very quickly, a lot of stuff going on in the city, but one of those is the swearing in ceremony the swearing uh, for the commissioners. The swearing in ceremony will begin at 4 30, and uh, commissioners will be sworn in at uh, 5 30. Uh, we have to do that uh, before January 1st, and this will be the last meeting of the year for us. Uh, the next commission meeting will follow on Christmas Eve, so we'll be canceling that meeting. And uh, uh, this will be the last meeting. And uh, new commissioner uh, Jerry Keith Coleman will be sworn in, and we'll be saying goodbye to Dallas Lane, who uh, I must say is, uh, I guess to put it uh, bluntly, he's he embodies what a what a public servant should be. And, uh, you know, he's an example to us all. Uh, he's a man of great integrity, honesty, and, uh, and uh, cares about people. And uh, whenever, I, whenever I became a commissioner, uh, Dallas was one of the first people to kind of take me under his wing, him and Gene. And, uh, you know, I didn't really know him when, uh, when I started, but we've become great friends. And, uh, you know, a lot of the... A lot of the uh, trips we've had to take, um, you know, me and Dallas went went together, and we would talk about issues and uh, talk about personal matters, and uh, you know, we we know each other very well, and uh, I I truly say I, he's he's somebody I love and have a great respect for. And he's given his all to the commission, and I bet he's another one of those that's not going to go away. He either. is not his, going his away. His caring for this city isn't going to leave just because. He's no longer a commissioner. Yes, and uh, you know he's go he's going to be placed on a couple of boards that we we need to uh, field and uh, need a man of his caliber. He's got 40 years in the banking business, uh, 40 years experience working with the public. So, uh, you know we're not uh, we we can't afford to lose that experience. And uh, and actually uh, Jerry Keith and uh, Dallas had a good good discussion. Uh, uh, Commission meeting, last commission meeting in uh, November, uh, they uh, Jerry came to that, and uh, he and Dallas sat down. And they had a good talk, and uh, uh, Dallas told him that if he needed anything, just to let him know. And uh, uh, Jerry said he'd, he'd call him. So you know that's uh, that's a good plug in for Jerry, and I think that uh, I think it'll help him. Dallas will be able to help him just as he helped me and the rest of us. And you know we'll we'll all work together to. Uh, help uh, Commissioner Coleman come on board and kind of kind of help him out. And uh, he'll have to go to, uh, which the new commissioners always have to go to uh, city or uh, city West uh, boot camp, they call it. But uh, <laughs> it's a city commission school, or school for new elected commissioners and mayors, uh, first week of January. Uh, the reason they have that, they told me that uh, whenever uh, they had a turnover in the office, that they had a lot of illegal firings. Uh, the new mayor or commission would come in and just sort of clean house and ah, do it illegally. Yeah. So they had a bunch of lawsuits, and they decided to have the school to 
teach what you could do, what you couldn't do. I guess that's a good thing, though. I guess it, it started is. off on the right foot, and then knowing how things work. Yeah, well, it helps you get your feet on the ground, and uh, you, like you say, you understand more uh, how it works. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it really was a great help to me, uh, very big help to me. Well, that's good, and um, I'm sure you've had a chance to sit down with Jerry Keith Coleman yourself and welcome we've, him in. And we've had a couple of good conversations, and uh, you know I, I'm real impressed with him. Uh, you know I, he's uh, he's got some good credentials, and uh, I'll tell you uh, uh, I think he's going to be a very very important part of our commission. That's a big thing to be a part of because the Pikeville City Commission is so forward thinking, and so progressive. Uh, you know, under Donovan's leadership also. I mean, Donovan, I will say, if he said it once lately, he said it a hundred times that the si the landscape yeah. of the entire city of Pikeville is changing. So I'm it, sure you guys aren't going to slow down just because your commission got shifted up a little bit. No, and uh, in fact, uh, you know, Commissioner Coleman is, is wanting to be a part of that, and he has some fresh ideas for that. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I see some great things for us in the future. Oh, yeah. good. And I'm sure during these meetings that we have every so often, we'll be talking about some of the new things that. Yes, and that's going uh, on. I'm sure that uh, Commissioner Coleman will be on here giving his update. We as well. had him on the the last time. He was a little bit nervous, but I think he'll be fine. Well, I don't think there's any reason to be nervous, but. <laughs> that's a little intimidating, but but it's all good. Yeah. December 10th, the swearing-in ceremony. Right. That evening, we're going to be having the city Christmas parade. Right. And uh, all the all the county schools are participating, and uh, it's going to be a wonderful parade. And uh, I love it since all the county schools are participating. It reminds me of the parades when I was a young. The marching boy. bands. We, right. We're starting to uh, lose our marching yeah. bands. Yeah, and uh, right. you know this this brings it back. A lot of these a lot of these kids look forward to uh, getting to come and parade and, and to march. And uh, you know when uh, you know used to it had gotten to be a parade of fire trucks. Uh, when I first came on the commission, and you know, we began to talk and decide how we could get. Uh, get as it. long as you've still got that last fire truck, yeah, that's always well, when I was small. That's the one that had Santa Claus on. Right. Well, you were always. You can't get rid that. of the last fire truck. Yeah. Well, well, when I was bigger, I got to play Santa Claus one. Did year. you really? Yeah, I did. Well. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> but the, you know, and one of the things, that, and it's been several years now. They changed the Christmas parade until 6 p.m. I like it better after dark. You can use yeah. more lights, and it seems like it's more festive. Yeah. Well, and too, in the discussions with the uh, uh, county superintendent, he requested that you know we do that on uh, Monday uh, night at evening, and he said it was easier to bust the kids over, and they you know didn't have to interrupt their weekend routine, and they could you know it was easier to get them to come over, and then that works out well with the. Uh, hospital's tree lighting ceremony too so uh, we've incorporated that together and uh, it's it's a wonderful event I, I look forward to it every year and it's just another reason that we love where we are yes it is yes, I it had is. to throw that plug in there <laughs> I mean I've lived here all my life and wouldn't want to be anywhere else no well, me either so me either. well we've pretty much taken care of everything we had to talk about on paper is there anything else on your mind or your heart that you that you want to share well I'm I'm Real happy about the uh, student technology leadership program that's having their uh, fair over here in the Expo Center this morning. Uh, there are uh, schools from all over the, the eastern part of the state there. And, many, uh, many counties represented. Uh, and they've got uh, judges from uh, Frankfurt that are there. I think uh, I've got a cousin that's uh, over the Frankfurt uh, Technology Department and uh, he was up here. I'm going to try to get over and see him. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a pretty big deal, and uh, the winner of this will go to a state competition. Well, and it's just another great thing that Pikeville has to showcase our city to those who are coming in from outside. Yes, it is. And, you know, uh, people just, you know, a lot of times uh, don't realize how many people uh, on a monthly basis do use our Expo Center and how many people come in to Pikeville because of it, and which I've shared on this show before. That, uh, you know, the, this effect, you know, uh, a lot of times people drive in, they'll see something in a window. Uh, you know, I, I talked about, uh, uh, I was up here at a local store and uh, I saw a car from Virginia and I began to talk to the, the guy that's, uh, uh, that was in the car, which I do that quite often. I strike up a conversation with anybody, it seems like. <laughs> Uh, anyway, you know, we 
got to talking, and uh, his daughter had came to a show at the expo and happened to see this wedding dress, and uh, or happened to see this prom dress in a window, and uh, they came back from uh, Tazewell, Virginia, to uh, to uh, do shopping, and uh, uh, this that was two or three years ago, and now today, or the, at the time I talked to him, she had came back to buy her wedding dress at this store. So. Uh, Good story. Oh yeah, and uh, you know we have people that uh, from West Virginia that uh, uh, shop at our local uh, furniture stores. They've come for the same reason uh, show at the Expo or Muscle on Main or some event that we've had in Pop. You just never know. I mean, that goes for life in general. You never know when somebody's looking. Well, it's it's you know it's uh, the old saying: location, location, location. And what makes a location is people. And the more people you have come to a location. Uh, the better your business is going to be. I think that's a good statement to end this show on. Commissioner Barry Cheney, thank you very much for joining us today. Well, thank you, Sean. I'm sure we'll do it again. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us for this Pikeville City Commissioner's Report. I'm Shannon Deskins.